Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell by the attendance that this is the this is the, the moment you've been waiting on. <laughs> uh, a very rich agenda this morning. Um, for me, it's a, it's a great honor and a privilege and a and a great pleasure uh, for me to welcome at the IOM Council session today the United Nations Deputy Secretary General uh, Jan uh, Eliasson and the Special Representative of the Secretary General for International Migration and Development, uh, Peter Sutherland. Um, I think we've already noted several times in our proceedings this week that the year 2013 uh, has been a very important one for those of us uh, working on uh, migration questions. So many speakers have already remarked on that. There have been a number of significant events, most notably the UN General Assembly's second high-level dialogue on uh, migration and development uh, that was held on the 3rd and 4th of October in New York. It's been an important year for IOM and for the UN, our diaspora ministerial conference. Uh, I was able to give an overview of the high-level dialogue and its impact on IOM uh, in my report on Tuesday. And we have distributed a paper, the copies are still available at the back of the room, uh, in more detail on the outcomes, I think, which all of us consider, I think, unanimously as a success. Um, we now have the opportunity uh, to hear from two uniquely placed and authoritative sources their own personal assessment uh, on migration, the high-level dialogue, and the way ahead on global migration governance and the various outcomes uh, of, the, of the dialogue. Let me add, perhaps most importantly, that IOM has no better friends or greater supporters than these two gentlemen. I say this without committing them because I know, I know how they feel. And also, uh, migration has no greater supporter than them, particularly in a period when governments have a kind of a counter-cyclical reaction to this period of the greatest human mobility in recorded history uh, at a time when there are more disasters than in anyone's memory when we all need to be pulling together in the same direction uh, uh, on human mobility. So let me, without further ado, go right to some very brief introductions of two people who, as they always say, don't need introductions, but I'm going to do it anyway. Our, um, I'm so proud of having um, their support here today that they could come from their busy calendars to Geneva uh, for, for, to be with us. Uh, Jan Eliasson has been the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations since July of last year, 2012. He's had a very rich and illustrious career, alternating mainly between the Swedish diplomatic service uh, and senior positions in the UN, and uh, sometimes managing to combine both of them, as when he was the uh, permanent representative of Sweden to the UN and also president of the General Assembly in 2005-2006. And this was during the time in which he presided over the preparations for the first UN General Assembly's high-level dialogue on migration and development. Um, he became the first uh, United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs in 1992. And when I met him, he was the UN Special Envoy for Darfur. Uh, in 2006 to 2008. I give him great credit for having helped us to get into the UN uh, in an observer status, and we still benefit greatly from that. Um, he has spent time in the Swedish Foreign Ministry, of course, a number of times, and was the Swedish Ambassador to Washington and served as Minister of Foreign Affairs. He's also, uh, has always been a statesman and a longtime friend of IOM's and was instrumental, as I mentioned, in forging close ties between IOM and the UN, which, for, uh, just by way of uh, information, we now have a member state working group 
on IOM-UN relations, and we're looking forward to the results of their deliberations. So I'm delighted, um, Mr. Deputy Secretary General, that you're with us today to talk about the relevance of migration to governments around the world. So uh, if I might uh, give you the floor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director General Swing. Uh, Special Representative Sutherland, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I, I thank you for this very warm and personal welcome. And uh, I didn't plan to say this, but uh, uh, on a personal note, let, let me tell you apropos my work with uh, humanitarian affairs and uh, disasters and catastrophes in the world that when I left that uh, assignment after two years, uh, having worked with many of the worst disasters in the world, I, I went to a reception in New York and the lady who then pre presented me to, to come up to the podium and receive the, the thank, respond to the, the very flattering things she said, she, she failed in the end to, to, to uh, give the right tone because when she asked me to come up to the podium, she said, and now let us meet Mr. Eliasson. He's the man responsible for all disasters in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that was somewhat unfair <laughs> after those two years. Anyway, <clears throat> I am indeed very glad to be in Geneva with all of you and uh, discuss uh, the critical issue of migration, uh, a subject of great importance uh, to the United Nations and of great personal interest to me as uh, Bill Swing just said. Uh, this meeting uh, of the IOM Council is taking place at a crucial time, uh, some two months after the General Assembly's high-level dialogue on migration and development. And uh, I want you to know that the IOM played a key role and a very constructive role uh, in that historic meeting, working closely with the UN in the extensive preparations and consultations that we had sharing with us its wealth of information and experience. Director General Swing has shown great leadership and vision uh, together with his team. And I, I thank him and his team for their unswerving and sharp focus on the needs of the world's migrants and on the power and on the potential of migration in today's world. Uh, let me hear those say that I'm sorry that you, Bill, and other Americans today will sacrifice parts of your Thanksgiving holiday, but it's a sign of the importance of migration that you're still with us during your, this very important holiday. <clears throat> migration by its very nature is a global issue. Human mobility, whether for basic livelihood, employment, study, family reunion, or indeed to escape persecution or violence, is one of the most prominent features of today's global landscape. Looking beyond 2015, our deadline for the Millennium Development Goals, as you know, the forecast suggests that human mobility will continue to rise. Migration should be an integral part of our future sustainable development agenda. I know this subject has been discussed at length at this meeting. The Secretary General's report, A Life of Dignity for All, outlines the UN vision for the road ahead. And let me tell you that I think this title very much reflects our aspirations on migration. The word dignity is a word that I would put in the center. One of the transformative actions uh, that this report identifies is to truly recognize and to enhance the contributions of migrants to economic and social development. The report points, points out that more than a billion people rely on international and domestic migration to improve the income, health and education of their families, to escape poverty and conflict, and to adapt to environmental and economic shocks. It also emphasizes that countries receiving and hosting migrants benefit significantly, a fact that needs to be better known in the world. During the high-level dialogue, we identified several practical measures to amplify the contributions of migration. 
both to migrants and to societies. Some of these measures can be implemented immediately. Others will require continued efforts and sustained commitment. First and foremost, we must ensure that migration takes place in a legal, safe and orderly fashion under conditions where the human rights of migrants are respected. It is intolerable that thousands of refugees, including many children, die each year in the understandable pursuit of a better life. The tragedies at Lampedusa early October and in the deserts of the Sahel just a few weeks later are shocking reminders of how urgently and how compassionately we must act. It is important to ground all migration policies firmly in hum fundamental human rights. This means protecting foreign workers from discrimination, ensuring the rights of migrant domestic workers and protecting men, women and children from trafficking, exploitation and abuse. I commend the IOM's launch yesterday of an information campaign to change negative perceptions of migrants. This is a campaign to which we all must add our voices. We must stand up for basic values and principles, recognizing all human beings equal value and their right to a life in dignity. We also need to be aware that the dividing line between forced and voluntary movement is growingly blurred in the complex reality of today's world. We continue to be confronted with millions of people who are displaced or across international borders due to conflict and violence or natural disasters. We are increasingly seeing the plight of migrants who are caught up in crisis situations without a clear source of assistance. The problem of stranded migrants is one to which I know the Secretary General and Special Representative Peter Sutherland is paying particular attention. Any migration policy must be firmly built on human rights standards. And long-held humanitarian principles, such as the right to seek asylum, must never be eroded. As an international community, we have several instruments to protect and promote human rights. I would urge all states to ratify and implement all international treaties related to migration. This includes core human rights instruments, including uh, the International Convention on the Protection of Rights of All Migrant Workers, relevant ILO conventions and protocols against human trafficking and migrant smuggling, as well as, of course, the 1951 Refugee Convention. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, since the landmark discussion on migration on, in 2006 at the General Assembly, we have been building trust and collaboration within and outside the United Nations, as well as between member states and international organizations. In particular, the relationship between IOM and the United Nations has grown increasingly positive and mutually fruitful. On the ground, we work closely together to deal with migration issues in all their aspects. I can see that whenever I go around the world and see the country teams and see that very good relationship. This cooperation, I know, is appreciated by you as member states, member states of both the United Nations and of IOM in this room. I understand a working group is being established, and I heard it now from Bill Swing, uh, to look in greater depth at the relationship between the United Nations and the IOM. I welcome this initiative and look forward to the continued dialogue between the UN and IOM. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, last month the General Assembly took a historic step by adopting its first ever declaration on international migration and development. We need increased commitment to work together to strengthen international partnerships in this field. We have a historic task to come together and increase the benefits of international migration for migrants as well as for host societies. We must do more together rather than acting alone. 
you in this hall understand the issues and challenges. You know the numbers, you know the facts, you know the realities. Many of you were in New York last month for the high-level dialogue. Among the attendees was Mesfin Kibebev Erko, a young migrant from Ethiopia. He's a member of a group that works to end torture and support survivors. He spoke, as you may recall, about the difficulties of migrating to another country. But then he added, after hearing what governments say at this high-level meeting, I felt, like, I felt like maybe there is hope. And it is our task, in my view, to transform the maybe to, into definitely. There is definitely hope. So that we can provide hope in, to so many who live without hope in this world and in these positions. Governments are coming together as, as never before, as we see in this room today. By endorsing the declaration in October, the General Assembly decided to work towards what member states pledged would be, and I quote, an effective and inclusive agenda on international migration that integrates development and respects of human rights. This is a strong expression of common political will that we should build upon. Now all of us, governments, the Global Migration Group, the Global Forum on Migration and Development, as well as civil society, must join forces to transform this political will into lasting concrete results for millions of people around the world. In this mission, IOM has an indispensable role. The United Nations is grateful and proud of our partnership with you. I thank you for your attention. You perhaps can see from the uh, presentation of the Deputy Secretary General that the, these two gentlemen were invited not just because of their positions, but because uh, we share something in common. We are all congenital optimists. Um, let me thank you, sir. Uh, our second speaker, uh,